Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show. We got a doozy of a video today from CNBC Make It. Back at it today with another episode of, wait for it, Millennial Money. Now for those not aware, because it's been quite some time since we've done a video like this, CNBC goes and follows the lives of millennials to see how they make and spend their money. And sometimes it's a train wreck and other times they're doing nothing wrong. And then I get upset because I have nothing to criticize. But this episode, on the other hand, is on another level. Check out this title. Living on dollar sign 515k a year in Berkeley, California. Wait for it, millennial money. So with that said, guys, make sure to destroy the like button, destroy the subscribe button, destroy the notification. <laughs> Let's begin. I didn't like the thought of putting money aside that I couldn't touch. I wanted to be able to invest everything. Ah, uh, CNBC, they always have the exact same shots. You're like, oh, let, let's go through your wallet and then pull out your cash and then just just play with it a little bit. Just just go and flip it through. Always the same B-roll shots. Through like the advice of my siblings and my CPA, I do contribute about $1,500 a month to my self-directed IRA, which I am able to invest. See, there we go. Through the help of your friends, your family, your CPA, the entire internet, me, everyone telling you to do that. Well done. That's an insane income, by the way. $515,000 at 25 years old. He's got to work in like tech or engineering. I'm gonna, obviously it's tech. My name is Sahil Mehta. I'm 25 years old. I make around $515,000 a year and I live in Berkeley, California. Wow, look at that real estate investor and developer. I thought for sure Berkeley would be tech. He's in some startup company. That is, he's in real estate. Wow. See, that's his apprehension for investing in the stock market because- But I can't touch it. I can't, if, if I buy real estate, I can look at it. But if I buy stocks, I can't see it. But you know what? This is fantastic. So I listen, I get his apprehension. I was very much the same way. I work as an executive assistant for Herman Chan at Golden Gate Sotheby's. And my day-to-day -day really can be largely unpredictable. I make a commission on every deal that we close. and. Fortunately, you know, the real estate market here in the San Francisco Bay Area has, has not slowed down. It has only increased year over year since I've started. Wow, that is nuts. Three hundred and fifty dollars to $400,000 a year as an executive assistant? Come on, promote this guy. Bring him above an assistant. He's got to be doing, listen, to bring in that? Gosh, how much money does the uh, does the boss make from this? The boss must make uh, probably over a million dollars, well over a million dollars a year for this. That's fantastic. He's good. Wow, he and his brother have nine point four million in real estate investments. I, I'm curious how much his brother threw into this and how much his brother makes too. Oh, let me guess. He has a YouTube channel. They all have YouTube channels. My dad was a practicing physician and my mom was a business owner. My family sort of lost a lot of what they worked so hard to earn in the market crash of 2000 and 2008. And so at an early age, I learned the importance of managing money and managing risk, which really accelerated my timeline. I had different side hustles in middle school. I was selling snacks in between classes. Oh, he was that kid. He was that kid. Listen, I, I get so upset. When those kids get in trouble at school, be like, oh, hey, you, you were selling candy bars. You can't sell that. So, but listen, they provided such a great service for everybody. And those kids were like, those are the true entrepreneurs in like fifth, sixth grade. They would come to school. They would, they would actually, they'd buy their own candies and stuff like that. They'd bring it to school. They would make money. Everyone loved them. It blows my mind that like those kids would get in trouble. I remember that in school, sometimes they'd get their candy cons. I remember that in school, like they would get their candy con. con Confiscated. I can't say confiscated. They'll get their candy confiscated. <laughs> can't, can't say it. I don't know why. But anyway, they would get their candy taken away. And uh, it was a tragedy. <laughs> I can't talk. It was a tragedy. His dad kind of looks like Bill Gates a little bit. Can't you see it? A little bit. I, I see the resemblance there. I don't pay any rent right now. I, I, I live in a building that I own. This is fantastic. So he lives in the building that he owns. Okay, that's good. So it's probably he's house hacking. There's, there's probably multiple units there and the, all the rent offsets his cost of living. I did the same thing. That's fantastic. Savings, $10,000 a month. That's phenomenal. Transportation, seventeen forty-five dollars a month. 
That's his car payment, car rental, and insurance. That, that's about right, but I have a feeling his Tesla car loan is probably at like 1.5% to maybe 2.5% of the high end. So it's like his interest rate is less than inflation. So it's better for him to have that payment than not. Set by Ray, I'm glad he's doing that, $1,500 a month. Food. $700 a month on food. This guy is dining like a king. Well done. Well, unless he's paying for his family too, but uh, maybe. Well, we'll see. Travel 460, not fine. Discretionary 310 with a barbell. Donations and shopping. All right. Memberships 198 with a squiggly. Ah, Equinox. How does he get an Equinox membership for less than $200 a month? That, that's the question we should all be asking, because Equinox memberships are like 230 unless he renegotiated after they started opening back up. That's what I have a feeling he did. And then phone, $70 a month. That, that's not bad. At the end of the last year, I found out that there was a way that I could buy the car and, and write off the entire amount if it weighed more than a certain amount. Yeah, section 179 deduction. That allows you to write off the entire cost of the car the first year it's in operation as a business. So for him, he spends $100,000 on the car. That's a $100,000 write off that exact same year. So this car is saving him a ton of money. So there's definitely moments where I will splurge on, you know, looking good and eating good because I have a membership at Equinox. Sometimes I don't make the best use out of it, and I know and it looks that way, but I do try to go to the gym. Ooh, oh man, look at his shoes. He's got the he's got the Ferragamo shoes. Oh my god, how much are those? Those shoes are like six hundred and sixty dollars. Six hundred and sixty dollars for those shoes. But you know what? Listen, I love those shoes. I'll tell you. From a style standpoint, like this is my style. I love them. You could even tell, like, look at the little buckle, the little silver buckle there. It's the horseshoe. That is insane for Ferragamo. So, like, the, the attention to detail on these shoes is incredible. Would I spend that much money? No. I, I would spend 100 bucks on these shoes, but uh, any over that, nah, not worth it. 84000 in a savings guy. You know, I have a feeling he's probably saving up for uh, another real estate deal, so for him, it's probably the best use of that money. Ah, see? Spoke too soon. Once he saves enough, he buys another house or upgrades his existing rentals. Perfect. Prior to owning the real estate investments, I probably was saving upwards of 99% of what I was making. That is largely what led to being able to buy and invest in real estate so early on is because I was able to save like a significant portion of what I made. Nice, well done. Well done, I gotta say his clothes fit him really nice. I know, odd comment to say. But uh, listen, he's got his style down. I think especially in real estate, if he's, uh, if he's showing properties to clients and whatnot, it's really important to have that presentable image, and he did that. Nice, look at that. He got his real estate license when he was 18. Really smart. He, he's got the hustle. He's got the work ethic, and uh, listen, $515,000 a year for him. It's gonna be nothing. Give it five years, it's gonna be well over a million. Wow, use the money he earned as an executive assistant to buy the property in Berkeley. I'm wondering if he got uh, a co-signer on that. I would be hard pressed to find a lender who would lend him on a property like that, even though he has a down payment, he worked for that. But as far as proof of income going forward, that could have been an issue. So maybe he addresses that here. My brother and I own five properties now in close proximity to Berkeley campus. We bought half of our portfolio last year, more than half of our portfolio just in one year. Doing all this while working as an executive assistant, it does give me a little more enjoyment because of the control. You know, I'm not told what to do or anything. And so part of that is definitely better. You know what I'm shocked here? Why are there so many dislikes? And uh, we got 173 people disliking the video. I wonder if that's because just people don't like landlords right now. It really seems like there's this whole thing, it's like anti-landlord. I'm curious if it, if it has to do with that, maybe. Sometimes I could wipe out entirely what I've made in a month, but generally I like to save more than half of what I make in a month. More if possible, but sometimes, you know, expenses that come with property ownership. That's fantastic, $25,000 a month uh, net monthly rental income. Net income, ah, that's, I, I'm assuming, is this, if this after all expenses, this is fantastic. And then I'm wondering if he must split that with his brother, which even then, 
phenomenal. This is really good stuff. The way that I've handled my taxes year over year has changed dramatically just because of the amount that I've made has changed. I created an LLC just so I could have some tax liability. I really don't know as much as my CPA. I, I like sort of am hands off. Oh yeah, you gotta, you gotta learn way more about your taxes. I think the Tesla was a good choice, but I would probably spend some solid time every single night researching the tax code, talking to different CPAs, because now it makes more sense to start keeping some of the money that you make instead of maybe making more. Because right now, California is taking like 40% of your income, boom, gone. So if you want to get yourself essentially like a 40% raise, you may as well start learning the tax code a little bit more to see if you're maybe missing out on something else that you could be doing. There's not really a particular number that I'm going after. Oh, they ask everybody the same question. What's the number? Give us the, give us the number. We want to know the number. They ask me the same thing. What's the number? What's the number? I just want to keep pushing as high as I possibly can go. The most important lesson I've learned about money is to be patient. The money that I make doesn't really change my why. It just proves that when you have your reason and a really grounded mission, the sky is the limit. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm shocked about the dislikes though. We gotta go to the comments and see what they say because maybe that's gonna provide us some insight. Because honestly, I think for this episode, the like to dislike ratio should have been way higher, way more likes. I don't get why 173 people disliked it unless it's because of jealousy, but let's see. All right, so we got Leslie. Can't wait for Graham Stephan to react to this. Well, here we go. See, I love how some people just make stuff up in the comments. Like, we got this. How did he get that executive assistant position so young with little experience? And then Amon just responds back, family business. It's like, oh yeah, he knows. And then Sotheby's is not a family business, obviously. How do you think his brother has 10 million in property? I don't, I, I don't get it. I love how people just make up their own, whatever, whatever they think they're like, they just state that as fact. Wow, and then we got this guy. Executive assistant salaries don't buy you properties in the Bay Area. Family help, which is fine, but it's good to be a bit more transparent and upfront to viewers. 96 likes. He works for Hernan Chan who probably pulls in five million a year, so you could definitely make four to $500,000 for him and buy real estate. Jeez. I don't get why, so it's probably that they think it's probably, it must be the family. He's, he's earning too much money in his 20s. It must be the family. That's the only explanation that could maybe help us solve this issue. It's like, oh, it's so silly. Oh, and then we got this one, uh, free agent bachelor. Real estate is basically mooching off houses that sell themselves. No takeaway other than go sell houses to make ridiculous commission. Nice. Wow, and then we got this one by Jason. This is the reason why Bay Area houses are so expensive. Yeah, as though it's just like, it's just him. With the entire real estate market, he is the, the singular reason why your real estate is so expensive. Not the buyers, not the people who pay those prices, it's him. So anyway, those are probably the reasons for some of the dislikes, but I gotta say, you know what? Fantastic episode, he's doing everything right. My only piece of advice to him is to learn the tax code. I think that would be a really good use of your time. Keep doing the exact same thing. Keep just not messing up and uh, always, no matter what, destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to destroy the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram. My posts are pretty much daily, so if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there, as in the podcast, The Ice Coffee Hour. New episodes being posted every single Sunday. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.